the set. I feel like we've been here before talking about how if we can play with tremendous focus, effort, uh, be the physical team, the team on the glass that we need to be, the team defensively we need to be, that allow us to have some pace and flow offensively. I feel like tonight is what that needs to look like. And that's running Rebel basketball. And that's what it needs to be every night. And it's my job to work tirelessly to make sure that that's what Rebel basketball becomes from this point forward. Really proud of our guys. Tremendous effort and focus. Outside of the uh, mild heart attack I had late due to the press, uh, I thought everything from start to finish was pretty good. Uh, but we've got some film to teach and work on for that for future games. Uh, TJ, did you do things? Uh, looked like you, well, you talked you had different players guarding Sam Merrill. Was that sort of the, the deal, giving them different looks? And uh, was it a combination of that and then maybe uh, just take him out of his room a little bit? I think so. He's, he's a really. Uh, just a really talented scorer. He scores in a lot of different ways. We prepared coming in saying, we need to do a great job with multiple guys, giving them multiple looks. The consistent theme was we wanted to stretch out his catches, make those tough. We wanted to make sure that every time he got a ball screen that he felt hands and pressure because when he has space, uh, he's an elite guard. And he's proven that year in and year out in this conference. So giving him multiple looks was good. I thought Amari did a great job on him. I think uh, you know Jonah had a crack at him. Marvin Coleman, Jay Green, I mean, all those guys, all our perimeter players had an opportunity, and I think they really took it upon themselves to do a great job. And then, you know, it's a team effort. When you guard a guy that, that's that elite, it takes a whole team, and I think our guys had great focus. You've been pretty vocal about the effort level needing to be higher this season. Is a game like this, can that be a good validation for the players to see that it works when they do get on the floor like that? You know, yeah, it is for sure, because Look, we've had some challenging losses uh, early in this season. I think with young people, uh, especially when they encounter some adversity, some doubt starts to creep in, some challenges. Uh, but how our guys rallied, the focus they've had, the momentum we've been building on, uh, I'm really proud of them for it. So hopefully they can bottle this up, understand this, this is not a one-time deal, this is who we are, and now get back to work because tomorrow we got to get ready to practice. We have a good Air Force team that's very skilled and shoots the ball well coming in on Saturday, and we've got to have a quick turnaround and be ready to go. There have been some pace of play issues this year, but tonight you were able to get into transition a lot because of defense. Can you talk about the importance of that end of the floor that triggers you guys able to be able to run? They're probably, truthfully, the best offensive team we've played this year. And to hold them to 32% from the floor and two for 19 from three is spectacular. That's, uh, they played a lot of good teams this year. They played a lot of good teams last year. My guess is that hasn't happened to them in any of those games. And so for us to be able to come out and do that, uh, you know, again, our, our hats are off to our guys. I think, look, overall, um, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Craig Smith as a coach. We've, we've had some battles. Uh, back in South Dakota, and he does a great job, and they're a great team. So we're just going to keep trying to do the same thing we've been doing all year. We're going to come to practice tomorrow. We're going to work hard. We're going to roll up our sleeves, and we're going to just keep trying to build on it. And, you know, we, we respect our opponents a lot. Probably, uh, for me, not as much as Craig and what they've done. And uh, We just want to keep getting better. To keep the intensity in the second half, at halftime, what did you guys say to one of you were playing so well, one of nine, from the three-point line in the first in the first half, and then you just carried it on in the second half. What'd you do in the, at halftime? We talked a lot about the first four minutes and how important that that stretch was going to be. A lot of teams come come out after half and either build their confidence or you can try to maybe break their will. That's what we were hoping to do. I think for us that started on the defensive end. If I'm not mistaken, we had three consecutive stops, which is where we we're hanging our hat all night tonight. That allowed that flow and that allowed that pace. So. Uh, that's just that's what we've got to be. That's what we've got to continue to do. And I think our guys really focused on that after halftime. We we're very intentional to the details mattering and getting those stops. Uh, can you talk a little about Hardy? He seemed to be flying all over the court, flying. Uh, his body was everywhere. And also, second question is, what do you think needs to be done to kind of energize the community, get more people in the building? First question with Hardy, I, I thought his effort was phenomenal. Thought. There's a lot of loose balls he came up with tonight. Uh, maybe a more competitive effort than we've seen. 
thought a lot of guys did. A lot of those 50-50 balls came our way, and they're a team that gets a lot of them. So I did think Amari was particularly elite in that category. As far as getting more fans to the game, uh, we're just going to keep coaching them hard, loving them hard, trying to bring it, make it a, a brand of basketball that people like to watch, a blue-collar team that represents our city, and the people that respect those values, those ideals. Um, our team, the first semester, got the highest GPA, I think, in program history. Our guys are working harder than they've ever worked. We're upholding a standard and implementing a culture that'll be, that'll last for, you know, for a very long time. So if that's something that people believe in and they want to be a part of, come on out and support us. What was the injury to Mbake, and is there concern that tomorrow it, it may swell up into something else, and finally did your heart skip a beat a little when you saw him do that? Yeah, it did. First of all, uh, he's, he's so valuable for our team. I mean, he has so much character, plays with so much passion and enthusiasm, and just, I mean, does the, does the dirty work, does the things a lot of guys don't want to do because of ego or whatever it may be. He has none, and he just gives of himself. So. Definitely was shook up. Then I think the second part of it is, as far as him and what that'll mean tomorrow, I'm not sure. I know he hit his back pretty hard. Uh, we want to make sure that we look out for his health first and foremost. I'm hopeful that it's nothing that keeps him out for too long, but I'm far from a medical expert. I need to spend more of my time focusing on press breakers and not turning the ball over at the end of the game. So I'll just allocate my effort there. All right, thank you very much. Thanks.